Alrighty then, folks, we are back with some more SD Gundam G Generations Genesis. So, we are on the final stage of Thoroughbred, you know, with that face. That glorious, glorious face. But, first things first, we need to upgrade some things. So, I've been. We unlocked the second group last time, but I've been. I, I have been trying to find ways to do it, but I've been thinking about getting custom pilots. But they're really expensive. Like, everyone else is free, but, like. Two stages is like three people. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Not yet, anyway, but I'll figure it out eventually. But, like, if you look at it stat-wise, like, I got Rusty Wiener to 21. He has 21 in all his stats. I think that might actually be related. I hadn't put that together yet. Never mind. That is just a happenstance that is awesome. Anyway, like, if you look at his stats when you compare him to, say, Char's, that's Char's stats at level 1. Like, his defense sucks. And, like, that's Amuro's stats at level 1. Definitely would not put Amuro in charge of anything, because he can't command to save his life. The only thing he can really do is maintain. But yeah, like, that's our stats at level 1, and then we could train him up to, like, level 10 within, like, 3 stages. Even Rumble Rawl's good. And Yazan's ridiculous. But yeah, we'll worry about that later. Anyway, first things first, we got our Grand Zeong to level 6, which, that allows us to pick between two things, so I'm gonna check exchange real quick. Yeah, nothing interesting. Well, the God Planted and the Gabthali, but meh, they're not mobile armors. They're close, but not exactly. Anyway, so we have the choice between the newest EL. Yeah, I was really wrong on that. Like, really wrong. I don't know why that's a thing, though. Or the Quinn Matha. I know... I know we really should go Quinn Matha because Quinn Matha is fucking badass and basically a giant Sazabi. Giant being it's like six times as large, I think. Something like that. It's freaking huge. But I kind of want to go new CL, even though this is space only, because I'll go and rank this up. Plus, we could possibly get Haman out of it, even though I'm not sure what that is. Like, that can't be a Cubalay, can it? It looks closer to, like, the O. And that's definitely the Zodacock. I think that's the newest EL2, which is the new type version of the newest EL. It was built, or it was never built, but it was designed by Axis Eon. It was originally going to be built for Char and CCA, but he figured, or Nai Nai figured out Psycho Frame, so they're like, well, that's kind of stupid. So they broke down what they had already built and built the Sazabi out of it. Though, I don't think that's canon anymore. But I think we're going to go no CL, even though there's no new type things on it. But we really should go Quinn Matha, because it's just, like, straight up better. Though it can't move as much, but that's not really a big deal. But if I don't like it, I can either roll back the save, or I could just go cra go train a Grand Zeong to 5 again. Hell, if I actually use EXB double in a turn... And do the second level of Thoroughbred, I can get a little bit quicker than that, even. Probably get it in one stage. Yeah. And I'm really curious as to what that is, because it's like land, space, and undersea, and it's only a large, so... That has to be the Cubalay, doesn't it? But, like, the picture does not look like a Cubalay at all. And unless that's, like... Uh, Guabon, like, it has to be the Zodacock, but the Zodacock doesn't work on a planet. Like, it's kind of a shit mobile armor in itself. It's a giant, uh, weapons platform, but all they did was stuck a giant missile in it and tried to drop it on the planet. And if you're wondering why I'm calling it the Zoda, uh, Zodacock, it's like the Zod -E Coke, but it literally is spelled Zodacock. No cat. Okay. Anyway, we are back. Um, and just for that, uh, my cat's been running into the door because, you know, he's weird. It's not even the blind one either. It's just my completely normal cat has been running into the door all day. I don't know why. But with the Johnny Riddens Gelgoog, as you can probably guess, we're going Rebow. The, so the bow is a stolen, was built off of the stolen plans from the bow, or from the Zeta Gundam. Stolen by uh, former Xeon scientists who defected from Anaheim during the when Axis popped out. 
and they took the plans, but the plans were pretty much incomplete, so Xeon filled in the gaps in the plan and built the bow, which is basically the red Zeta. Um, but they didn't get it exactly right, and it's significantly weaker, but they managed to find a way to mass produce it fairly cheap. So it became the Royal Guard unit of Axis. Uh, most of them would go towards Glummy's side, but a couple survived, and for the ones who survived through CCA, one was eventually recovered and taken by Full Frontal, who upgraded it into the Rebow and was going to use it for himself. But at the same time, they stole the Shinaju Stein, which is basically uh, a mobile suit built off of the data from the new Gundam and the Sazabi without a Psycho Frame, without most of a Psycho Frame anyway. So that... Eh, bad cat. Um, so they just took that, painted it red, and it became Full Frontal's mo mobile suit. And we are on to the Gion. We're not going to upgrade the Sazabi just yet, and you'll see why in a second. But we're going to upgrade the Gion. We're going to go with the Gion Custom, because even though I want one of these, I could get one later. And the Galbaldi A, we can pretty easily get a Galbaldi B a little bit later in the game, so we're just gonna go get a Galbaldi a, or Galbaldi Custom. Um, and with the Galbaldi cus or with the Custom, we can turn it into the Eos if we wanted the Galbaldi B or the Arjarja, which I think we're gonna go for the Arjarja. Or we could go back to the straight Galbaldi or Gion. I keep saying Galbaldi. Um, with this, since we're in space, we're just going to go with the high mobility tab instead of the sleeves. These are exactly the same, except for this one has more energy, so it's more useful to me. And stat-wise, it's slightly better. But the reason we're also going to go for this one is I'm pretty sure one of these other forms will have the sleeves. This is a Gabaldi A, by the way. So I'm figuring one of these will also have a sleeves version, and I'm hoping one's the Jaeger. She's not getting back in all day, so it's fine. She can survive out there. Um, down to the Federation team, because none of these guys have been trained. Because we don't really have pilots for them. Well, we do have pilots, but I don't want to use them. And, like, these three are ground only, so meh. I did move the Gerbera Tetra over into the Federation team. Because it's a Xeon... Or, into the Xeon team from the Federation team. Because it's a Xeon suit, and we didn't really need to train it. Though we will be training it in a little bit later for that, but... Oh, well. I've already used that in... I've already actually used that, though. Yeah, so... We've already seen all the attacks. As far as the Federation teams go, I got the GPO-1 again for this because I thought I could turn it into something. It turns out I can't. But I can trade it for a Galbaldi B or a Jaeger, which might be worth it. But second exchange, yeah. The GPO-1 and the full burn-in are the same suit in this. One works in space, one works on the ground, etc., etc. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to develop it into the three after this, and then on my own time. I apparently can't click Y from there, which is annoying. On my own time, I'll go and get the Orcus from it. And then we'll just have that as the... So next round, we'll have the Orcus in this, and then we can just use that instead as its mobile armor. Um, With this Gundam, we can either turn it into the G3 or the full armor. We, have, we still have the full armor 7th Gundam, which we could go into the heavy or the uh, full armor Gundam. So I think we're just going to go into the G3. Plus, that gets us access to some stuff because that's white, but the Gundam isn't. Which is weird, but oh well. Um, as far as the Nero, there's the GM3 or the new GM3 or the S Gundam. You'll notice, look at the stats. The S Gundam is just straight up better. Plus, it has the Alice, which I'm curious to see what it is. Also has thigh beam cannons and sniping. And the beam smart gun, which everyone in this world, or everyone in Sentinel has, is a beam smart gun. I don't know why they never used them after it, but they apparently made like 600 of them. So yeah, we're going to get that, and it's also really goddamn expensive. Should be fun. Um, we're going to, we can either turn in, I think this is going to be a Faz, not a double Zeta, but it looks like a double Zeta. This is going to be the X, the EXS, I think it's called. Though it's, it can go on land, so it might be a different form of it. But we unlock What's-His-Face when we unlock it, too. I was going to say Longshore, but that's the uh, Grunt antagonist. 
The main uh, the main antagonist is Brave Cod. I can't remember what his name is though. I could probably look it up, but I'm too lazy. Th that's the main pilot who the Alice falls in love with. Um, so the S Gundam has a new has a AI on it called the Alice, which is sentient for some reason, and the AI ends up falling in love with their pilots. So it has to be like in a certain range of appearance and a single male pilot or something like that. And then it falls, in, it falls in love with the pilot and eventually kills itself to save him in various Gundam fashions. And I don't think he ever notices, but it does, which is kind of weird. But it's a light novel, so it's kind of hard to tell. This one might be the XS. But yeah, it's in a light novel, so it's not really the best well-written thing, but oh well. Um, as far as the fifth gu or the boost Gundam, nothing here we really want, because like even the Madrick, we already get all that stuff. So it's just kind of a circular tree on this one. But as I said, whoops, no, we don't want to do that. We're going to stand you by. We're going to go grab our full armor sixth or seventh. And instead of going into this, which I originally thought we were going to go to, which, you know, that can also go into the Orcus if we wanted. Eh. We're going to go with the full armor for here. Or do we want to go with heavy? Hmm. We could go back to the full armor if we go heavy. Can we go back from the full armor too? Yeah, we can. Wow, all right, so they can both turn into each other, so it really doesn't matter. Equipment wise. We're gonna go with the heavy because the heavy has better equipment. Um, I did train up the Hazel. We trained it up quite a bit actually. Um, I, as of course, I only know what this one is. This is the Byar Lant, which I'm assuming the Byar Lant customs in this, but I'm thinking this one maybe. Um, yeah, I think that one's the Byar Lant custom. We also apparently unlocked Jared through that. What is that, a Marisai? Um, anyway, or no, that's probably the Goplant. Never mind. Not Goplant, uh, Gal uh, Gabtholi. Yeah, that one. This is the Byar Lant. It is a suit designed to fly in the atmosphere it doesn't look aerodynamic at all and looks kind of weird but the custom made it look a little bit better um jared used it during the attack on kilimanjaro and i think dakar he didn't do much with it it's just kind of there besides that we have the hazel oswala which looks like an upgraded version of what we have now and then we have the high Hi this is the prototype goblant however which, I mean, like, that's cool, but we already, we have Ingrid's Goplant over here, which I was going to show in a second. So I think we're going to go with this one and then get this, because this probably turned into it. Uh, it can't, but... Is this what I think it is? Is that the prototype Ashimer? It might be. I'm assuming this is the uh, Hazel 6. I can't remember the name to it. The TR6. Yeah, we're going to go with that one, just because. That one's also really expensive, surprisingly. Um, we have Ingrid's Goplant, which this is Ingrid from... Uh, this is one of the pretenders to being Johnny Ridden in uh, Return of Johnny Ridden. This is a 13-year-old girl who was somehow a 40-year-old Xeon pilot. I'm not exactly sure how people thought that unless they didn't know what she looked like. But yeah, she's like 12. We can get her. We can either get a Goplant out of it or a Goplant Kai, which is a thing in this. I don't know which one we're gonna do. Though the Goplant Kai is in a mobile suit. It's a mobile, or it's like a jet kind of thing. I don't know which one we're gonna go with though. But we have that, and I'll show you it off. It only has like two attacks, so it's not all that interesting. We have the Slave Wraith, which we're not gonna be able to use because this is space. But I figure we use it eventually. We have a mass production gun cannon. Um, I'm not going to show you guys this. If you guys want me to, I can, but, like, it fires its cannons and has a bullpup machine gun. They're literally reused assets. Or, not assets, uh, animations. Uh, I went and looked at this. I was like, oh yeah, we're going to use that in the sniper. The sniper at least has a kind of cool attack, but, like, this looks exactly the same as the gun cannon. Like, there's nothing to it. Though, we can trade it for an Ogo if we wanted. I'll get one of those one of these days, but... Like, exchange, ex, uh, exchange is so nerfed that it doesn't matter. Um, 
I think we're going to go gun cannon instead of GM cannon. I'll get a GM cannon on my own time. But we're going to do white dingoes eventually. I.e., I think that's... I think Blue Destiny's next after Igloo, and then we're going to do White Dingo. So we'll have access to a GM Cannon eventually. They get their own custom one that looks kind of weird. But in this one, it gets a shield, so it might be a little bit better. So we're going to go Normal Gun Cannon, then I think we'll go Gun Cannon, uh, the Gun Cannon 2. That's the Laser Gun Cannon. I don't know which one this is. I want to say it's the uh, RX-77-3, which is... The gun cannon with missile launchers, but that pose, I just can't tell you. And then we have the sniper, the GM sniper, too. We can develop that into the cold district type. I don't know how they got the translation on that. I I guess cold cli or uh, cold region means something else for in Singapore, but this is the GM cold region type, or the GMC, which is what I thought one of the earlier mobile suits was going to be. Um, basically this is one designed to work in Russia. It has less open spaces and the filters are better. Not much of an improvement over the normal GM, but it has a machine gun instead. We have the GM command, which we'll be getting eventually, so I'm probably going to ignore. Plus, all it gets is a, the cold district GM, so don't care about that one. Or the Delta Team Sniper. I'm not exactly sure what the Delta Team is. I know this one's from Lost War Chronicles, but I don't know how this is any different from what we already have. Though it has the Sniper 1 instead of the Sniper 2 Sniper, and it's painted blue. But, like, it's exactly the same of what we already got. Except, well, this one has a bullpup machine gun, the other one just has a machine gun. So much different, you know, reloading mechanisms. But yeah, so we're gonna, I'll show you guys what the Sniper attack looks like, and... Sniping too probably because sniping's really good for taking down enemy or weakening enemies but not killing them because it does a set amount of damage and then I'll probably upgrade to the Delta team on my own and then do some stuff with that and train it into I don't know a GM command it's probably a ground command though I don't know we'll find something better for it or we'll go back to the sniper and complete the circle I don't know but I'll show you that off for now I've been kind of loath to have second teams on both of these people, or both of the ships, because it makes the game way too easy and way too tiresome. Okay, yeah, I did that. Um, but we are going to go to development and design, because there's quite a few we can unlock now. We could either go designing on individual things, or we could go, you know, all designs. Oh. Okay, never mind. I thought that was my cat. Um, so on all designs, we can get Eric Blanc's high mobility Gelgoog. This is the one from 0081. Von Cuspins, this is one of the guys from Igloo. We'll get to that eventually. Char's Gelgoog. GM Sniper 2. Yeah, for some reason, the Gundam didn't proc this one, but the G3 did. And this isn't the GM Sniper 2, it's the GM Sniper 3. I have video proof. I actually did play this game. It isn't the Sniper 3. The Sniper 3 is a Titan's mobile suit. That's just the Sniper 2 with a lot more thrusters. It's not very good. Though it might be in this game. Who knows? Eric Blanc, Zaku 1. Which, I'll show you this when we get to see it in a second. This is just a Zaku 1 with a Heat Sword instead of a Heat Hawk. Which I love the idea too, but it has no guns. Usually give it a Bazooka and keep with the Heat Sword and then the Knuckler because it increases damage. It's amazing because there's no reason Zaku's shouldn't have Heat Swords. But for some reason, they started producing Heat Hawks still even after the Heat Sword was produced. Because both the Heat Sword and the Heat Saber from the... Uh, the Heat Sword from the Gauf and the Heat Saber from the Dom were easier to make than the Heat Hawk. They were smaller, though, so that might have been the reason. But all it is is making metal super heat that wouldn't melt. I don't know why they kept using Heat Hawks, but they did. We can get the Act Zaku, which is kind of surprising to me. Uh, we can eventually... We give that... to. Uh, Sanguine dude, you know, crazy guy we're fighting right now, and we'll get his version, which is slightly better, and has ridiculous dodge. Um, Char Zaku. Literally, this is a Zaku that goes slightly faster. It's not even three times faster, it's like 20%. Which, I guess, early in game, it might be nice, but it turns into the same thing Zaku's do, and... Yeah, there's nothing worth it. And the Shinaju, the reason why we didn't upgrade the Sazabi. I think you can still get it through the Nightingale, though, so... It's worth to check, but not important. 
So we can just free straight up get this the Shinaju, but it costs like 200 million or something, some ridiculous number like that. Not 200 million, 200,000. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, we got all those things. Like this is just a straight Gelgook. Like it even turns into Gelgook's things. Sleeves. This is the ground version. Charizaku turns into the exact same thing the Zaku 2 does. The action Zaku, which turns into things we don't know about. Uh, this is definitely the Zaku FZ. I don't know about these other ones, though. Oh, and the action Zaku does have a beam rifle. It's uh, reactor is slightly better. Also, has a custom Zaku machine gun. Never heard of that before. It's probably Zaku machine gun Kai, which I have heard about. It's the 90mm machine gun. But yeah, Von Cuspins, which literally just a Galgook. Yeah, look at the mobility on char stuff that are supposed to go three times faster. They go like a sixteenth faster. The Sniper 2, which I really like this one. It has both the Nerf gun, the long range rifle, which in game it didn't have. I'm still salty about that. And the rocket launcher, which I love. Like, this is making the Sniper 2 really good. Which we might get this eventually. Like, I might get rid of the Sniper and just give him a Sniper 2. But yeah, you never got that sniper rifle in game, and I really thought you should have. Blanc Zaku 1, which has the heat saber and the shield and then a basic Zaku machine gun. But can only turn into a sniper 2, a Gattle fighter, a Zaku 2, or a Zuda. Remember we did that before. His high mobility type, which turns in the exact same things. Well, the exact same things as the high mobility type. And the Shinaju, which costs a ton. Yeah, it's 1.2 million. Like, we couldn't even afford that right now. Or no, that's 120,000. I've seen one too many zeros there. We can't actually afford this if we wanted, but it can go, what is this, uh, Z Zulu? And that's definitely the Alpha Zero. Yeah, so that's all that. And now we're gonna go upgrade our. Oops, not produce. My bad. We're gonna go upgrade our Sazabi into the Nightingale. Because while we could get the new Gundam, that would mean we'd have to put on the Federation team. That's no fun. We're going to go Nightingale, which is the mobile armor version of the Sazabi. Basically, this is from a novel called Bellatroika's Children, which was the original draft of uh, Char's Counterattack turned into a novel. Uh, it had Amaro, or it had Bellatroika Irma and Amaro together, and she was pregnant with his kid. Uh, everything still happened except for... Bellatroika designed a better new, which had double wings, and it was painted white and purple for some reason, and called the High New, which you can't actually get here. Which you have to get to level 40, also unlock Bellatroika for it, apparently. Um, yeah, there's really no difference to the story, except for I think, uh, what's his name? Hathaway kills Kess instead of Amuro doing it, and a couple of other small things. But this is a mobile armor version of it. He's also not as afraid of mobile armors as he was in the actual story. We're going to get one of those. And now just to make sure. Yeah, you can combine them still. Oh yeah, and that's all Gato stuff. Anyway, folks, that was that. If you liked the episode, you should like. We'll be back for... We'll be back in a few minutes for peace.